Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome to the program. If you really, truly want to be close to God, then you have to make a choice, the kingdom or the world. And another aspect of this is this area of loneliness. I hear this from people all the time, that when they make a decision for the truth, when they decide that they want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, which is the only thing that pleases God, which is the only thing that will draw you close to God, then they start feeling lonely. They start feeling left out because they're not participating in all the things of the world. Um, they get to the point where they can't stand all the false doctrine, all the negative confessions of most so-called Christians. And they realize they can't be around false doctrine. So they pull away from old friends and old places and old churches and ministries and such. And all of a sudden they realize that they're kind of alone. And what happens is they start sort of rebelling against this aloneness as they see it. And they want to belong. They want to be part of what's going on in the world, but they can't anymore. And so they regret having, I don't know if they, they fully regret, but in a certain way, they regret having pulled back from all of the social things that they were involved in, even though those things have false doctrine that they now see. And the fact is, if you're really walking with the Lord, if you're really doing things His way and pulling into Him, you won't be lonely. Loneliness is a product of continuing to desire the world. I don't belong to a country club, a bridge club, a hunt club, a garden club. I don't even participate in community prayer groups for pastors because I don't want to be in those places. I no longer desire to be part of that social system. I no longer have a need for people for the sake of people. And you see, this is what happens. We're so used to being involved in even religion. You look at the, the religious structure uh, of most churches, and it's all about committees and groups and meetings and outreaches and all these things that people within the church get together and do. And they get together and have men's meetings and prayer breakfasts and women's meetings and prayer breakfasts. And it's all about the socializing of it. And yes, there is an aspect of fellowship that is wonderful, but it has to be true fellowship. The Lord says in 2 John that if you fellowship with anyone who does not have the pure doctrine of Christ, then you are partaking of their evil deeds. Why would we want to do that? Why would you still see that as desirable? Even people who have to a certain extent, pulled apart from the world and, and the desires of the world, still see the religious gatherings as something that they miss. Uh, people, I notice, will go back into churches that have false doctrine because they just need to have what they call fellowship. But it's not fellowship. And so to be Fully, fully a part of God, fully, and to have this eternal focus, you have to see this clearly. And if you have an eternal focus, you won't be lonely. You won't, because you won't desire the company of people just for the sake of people. They can be the nicest people in the world. They can be the friendliest, most pleasant people to be around. But if they have false doctrine, then they have foul spirits attached to them, whether they know it or not. 
And if you want to be around that, then you haven't got it yet. The only reason people get lonely is because they desire people. Instead of desiring people, desire God. Desire greater communication with Him. As I talked about in the last teaching on this, in James 4, 8, the Lord says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Don't keep wanting to draw near to people. Draw near to God. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Stop being double-minded. Yes, it's wonderful when there is true fellowship. I treasure the people in my church because we can have true fellowship. We're all on this same walk together, and we can have fellowship, which is why when we have our Bible study on Thursday nights, it's followed by a family dinner, a buffet. We can all continue to sit around and talk and be with each other. But unless it's real fellowship, true fellowship, then you shouldn't feel lonely without it. Uh, you should feel lonelier when you're in the midst of it because you're surrounded by assassins. You're surrounded by evil doctrine. You're surrounded by people who aren't walking the walk that you are with Jesus. And false doctrine is no more than a lie of the devil. Why would you want a fellowship with that? Why would you want to be around that? And that's why, again, uh, in the fourth verse here, he says adulterers and adulteresses, spiritual adultery. Do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You can't be double-minded. You can't be wanting that intimacy with God that's available to you and also wanting intimacy with people who are setting themselves against God by the doctrine that they believe. You cannot have both. You have to make a decision. And if you are feeling lonely because you have moved into the whole truth, it's because you've begun to move, but you haven't moved far enough. Because you couldn't be lonely if you're walking with Christ every day. You can't be lonely if, if God himself in all of creation is a reality to you and you're face to face with him. In 1 John 2, 15 through 17, do not love the world. It's amazing how much of this is in the word, isn't it? Do not love the world, nor the things of this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Remember it said in Romans that we were to have love without hypocrisy? Well, if anyone loves the world, desires the world, desires the things of the world and the pursuits of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you want to draw closer to God, you have to get totally immersed in Him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, therefore of Satan. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. There is so much out there that opposes the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the Antichrist spirit that doesn't deny his existence. It opposes his power. Think about how much of that is going on. And by this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. If they left us, they were never one of us in the first place, no matter how convincing they were. That's something to think about. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. 
Now I read verses 19 and 20. This is essential. The world is passing away and the lust of it, the pressure of it, the desires of it, it's all temporal. The only thing permanent is Christ. The only thing permanent is your oneness with Him. The fact that you are in His image and likeness, His character, His DNA. It's not about what you physically look like. It's, it's not that shallow. This is a desire that has to be from the very, very center of our souls if we are going to have this intimacy and behold God's faith and God's face. Yes, God's faith. God had faith to bring the worlds into existence. And we have to have that same God kind of faith. And then when we trust God completely, trust Him utterly and lean not, as it says in Proverbs, unto our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge Him. He will guide our footsteps. But we have to want only what God has. And if God hasn't given, to us, given it to us, we do not want it. See, this is where we have to get to. And this is the line that a lot of Christians have not been willing to step over. To completely disregard the world and the lure of it, the veneer of it that Satan puts over it to try to convince us that we want that, that doing without it, including all the social things, is a real sacrifice. Well, if your thinking is in line with God, you won't consider it a sacrifice. You'll consider it a relief to be away from that. In Ephesians 4, 17 and 18, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, trying to figure things out in their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. You see, that's what giving into loneliness and such things really does. It blinds your heart. Because if you desire to be around people, even lukewarm so-called Christians, then you haven't really got it. God says that if you're lukewarm, He will spew you out of His mouth. He will vomit you out of His mouth. You want to be around people who are in that category? I don't. I find it very grievous to be around people who are not on our spiritual page because they're spouting unbelief, they're speaking in opposition to God all the time. They are actually enemies of God and they don't even know it. You couldn't convince them if you tried. But I can't stomach that and therefore I have no desire to be around that and neither should you. And so loneliness should not be an issue if you're really seeking the face of God. Verses 22 through 24, still in Ephesians 4, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. In other words, according to the lies of the devil and what the devil tries to convince us is desirable the pressure of wanting things in the world. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. See, true righteousness and holiness means being set aside for God, being set apart for God. Didn't Jesus say, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord? Yes, he did. You see, we look at things such as teenagers who want fancy, high-powered cars, which get them in a world of trouble because they speed, because they've got all this power. But we know and trust as adults, as their parents, that they will grow out of that and they will realize that that just doesn't make any sense and they will 
alter their view and settle down. But many adults do the same thing. They focus on the stuff. They let the, the ministries that have perverted the prosperity message to make it all about stuff convince them that they want what the world has. And only if they have everything that the world considers important will they be able to be a good witness. Well, the Lord has no problem with wealth. See, this is where the, the confusion comes in. The Lord has no problem with wealth. The Lord intends to give us wealth in order to establish His covenant, but not to establish us in the world's mess, not to establish us in the same scramble for status symbols and thinking that having mansions and luxury cars and yachts and fancy jewelry and designer clothes is the goal. No, that's not the goal. That's what has been the perversion of the prosperity message. God wants you to give wants to give you more than the world could possibly give you, but not if you're going to be drawn into the world's ways by it. Because he doesn't want to hurt you. He wants you to stay with him. So we have to be completely isolated from the world emotionally, physically, and mentally, intellectually, so that we can move about within it without wanting to be like it, without seeing it the way the devil presents it as a highly desirable thing. We shouldn't want to be part of the jet set and the lifestyles of the rich and famous. As I said, I've been there. It's not what you think it is. It's a mess. It's a bunch of very desperate people trying to convince themselves that they've finally got the brass ring. But they haven't. Because that's not the way to get it. Only in Christ can you get it. Only with God can you get it. And so, as adults, we have to realize that we're not supposed to be little kids wanting a lot of stuff anymore. We are to grow up and take our place in Christ and learn how to see below the surface so that we're not lured and seduced by the world. When you get closer and closer to God, none of that is going to have any appeal to you. And that's how you will know that you're really succeeding in getting close to God. Because the things of this world, even all of the, the church so-called fellowship, where it's all these clubs and committees and things, will have no lure for you. And you'll stop feeling lonely. You'll, yes, you'll be delighted if you find someone else to fellowship with who is truly in the truth and dedicated to God. But unless and until you find that other person, you're not going to want the company of those who are apart from that. You're not going to want to be around it. If somebody tries to draw you into it, you will back up as fast as you possibly can because you know it for what it is. So if you're struggling with loneliness, it's because you need to get closer to God. You need to be able to really behold His face. You need to be able to fellowship with Him and walk with Him. People like Enoch walked with God for 300 years. It doesn't say that a crowd went with them. It wasn't the case. There is an aspect to our walk that is so completely set apart. And most people, most Christians, see that as a great sacrifice and a, a place of terrible isolation and loneliness. And it's the wrong way to look at it. When we pull apart to God, we have to realize as we are set apart in true righteousness and holiness, set apart for God, 
in his way of doing and being right, then we will begin to move into those realms that we desire. People are always saying they want to hear the voice of God. Well, if they're listening to the voice of the world and the voice of other people, it's going to be really tough, really tough to hear the voice of God. But the more you pull away from everything that is not truly of Him, and in great measure, that includes religious people, people who have added to this doctrine or taken away from this doctrine. That is a dangerous place to be. So don't think that you want to be part of all of these clubs and committees because that's not going to bring you closer to God. That's just going to give you a social life which is of the world. I want you to get these teachings. Behold the face of God. Everybody wants to do that, but there's a price. And we talk about the price. The price is abhorring what is evil and clinging to what is good. The price is drawing close to God so that He will draw close to you. The price is not being double-minded, not wanting the world, not wanting to belong to the country club and the garden club and the bridge club and the hunt club and whatever other club. You can put any name you want there for Christian clubs. It's not wanting that. It's wanting that oneness, that glorious oneness with God. And that will fill every empty place and will put you where you need to be. And loneliness will no longer be an issue. Loneliness is only an issue when we're still seeing the world the way the devil wants us to see it, when we're still desiring the company of ungodly people. And that includes religious people. The names of the teachings, individual teachings in this set, are His Image and Likeness, understanding what that really means, having a renewed mind, divine design, and where you fit in it, eternal creation, and the face of the deep and in Christ. And you will learn in this set of tapes why God designed it for us to be married to the city of New Jerusalem. You will understand that part of His design. There's a reason we are to be married or joined to the city. And it is an awesome, wonderful reason. And it will cause you, if you're anything like me, to get very excited about it. And will show you a whole new aspect of God's creation and your part in it. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we all want to be. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He will accomplish this. And that's what this set of teachings is all about, is sanctifying us. The way God sanctifies our whole being, body, soul, and spirit. And that includes the understanding of why we will be married to the city, which will just knock your socks off. But if you want maximum blessing from the Lord, stop hounding Him for the blessings and start trying to bless Him, and He'll bless you back. I know years ago I was convinced by some leadership in the church that having a positive confession meant you spent all day, every day, saying, Lord, I receive whatever it is, a new car, a new house. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive this new house. And you were supposed to go to whatever house it was that you decided you wanted and walk around it and lay hands on it and claim it and spend your whole time saying, Lord, I receive this thing, I receive this thing, I speak to that, that property, that house, that car, whatever it is, and I claim it as mine. Well, I suddenly realized in the midst of this, very shortly after I began it, praise God, that my focus was all wrong. That I wasn't supposed to be just 
hounding God nonstop for, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. That wasn't giving me any joy. It wasn't bringing me any closer to God. It wasn't putting me in a place of intimacy with Him. It was just like a little kid pounding my fist on the table saying, I want, I want, I want, I want, and it was wrong. And so I went to the Lord and I prayed and I said, Father, how do I deal with this and understand this? Well, a positive confession isn't focusing your whole life on what you want. You receive what you want from God. You put your petitions before the Lord. You know that He's heard you. You thank Him for it. But your focus is intimacy with Him. And once I went back to focusing on intimacy with Him, focusing on hearing from Him and loving Him, which also means obedience because He doesn't receive love unless it's accompanied by obedience. That's the evidence of our love. Uh, then I began to get to know God better. Then I began to receive from Him His Father's gifts. And as He says, you don't have to worry about what you will wear and what you will eat and what you will do. The Lord knows you have need of these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. So I began to get to know His voice, to know His face, His touch, His smile. And I realized that this is what it was really all about. God would take care of the needs, and yes, we appropriate them. We appropriate them by faith. But we don't spend our entire lives carrying on about them. Learn how to fellowship with the Lord, how to walk with Him, not whine at Him. Lord, I'm lonely. I need friends. You have Him. You have God. You have the Holy Spirit. You have Jesus. How can you be lonely if you're really walking with them? So if you want to deal with all these issues, Learn real intimacy with God. And that's what this set of teachings will teach you. How to move into that. And how to develop this eternal focus. And see the things around you. Including your needs in an entirely different light. God will give you the whole world. But He will do it His way. And you need to learn to know him in the glory of all that he has done and in the power of the resurrection of Christ and tap into that and walk in that, then you will succeed. I will see you next time. Meanwhile, remember, you shall know the truth and it's the truth that shall make you free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us or to order materials or to make a gift by phone, you can by calling the phone number on the screen.